Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. Today's rundown is dedicated to Burt Reynolds, who sadly passed away yesterday. He was in tons of great movies, Deliverance, Smokey and the Bandit, Boogie Nights, a great career, fantastic actor, and he will be missed, but uh, his legacy will live on. This is also going out to Spider-Man, because it is Spider-Man Day in the video game universe. But let's get started with our rundown. The game industry is really hoping that you're not burnt out on the battle royale genre. With the open beta for Battlefield 5 available now, EA and DICE have revealed new details about the battle royale mode coming to the game. Known as Firestorm, the mode is being handled by a different EA subsidiary, burnout developer Criterion. That means you can expect extra emphasis on vehicular combat. We also know that Firestorm will have the biggest map ever in a Battlefield game, and matches will feature 16 teams of four players in contrast with most other battle royale titles. Finally, Firestorm Storm will have destructible buildings and give players the ability to build fortifications, which should sound familiar to Fortnite fans. Battlefield 5 deploys in November. I'm excited by anything that Criterion touches, but I, yes, I believe this is a, an, a you know a year of chasing the hit makers and also shaking things up in some pretty substantial ways. I think Battle Royale is here forever. I think it's a mode just like Team Deathmatch, you know, or King of the Hill or whatever that people are going to want to play forever. And I think it's just going to take a lot of tuning and a lot of uh, mistakes and a lot of learning and it will just get better and better. Uh, and hopefully this is one of the better examples of how Battle Royale can be employed in a huge title like Battlefield. Now, a very cool action RPG is coming back from the dead. European gaming giant THQ Nordic has bought the rights to the Kingdoms of Amalur franchise from defunct developer 38 Studios. The deal includes the rights to future games and any unrelated material, including an MMO that had been in development but never completed. The Amalur franchise has seen a lot of trouble, to say the least. The original game, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, was released in 2012, but despite critical praise, including from yours truly, it didn't sell well enough to keep 38 Studios alive. It also didn't help that the studio and its founder, MLB pitcher Kurt Schilling, were sued by the state of Rhode Island for failing to pay back a loan they received to develop the game within the state. Now that THQ Nordic owns the franchise, it means that all those problems and legal issues are a thing of the past, and fans can hopefully expect new games in the coming years. This isn't the first time THQ Nordic has bought a dead franchise from a defunct publisher. They also acquired the Darksiders and Red Faction franchises from the original THQ, along with their name. Now, I am excited about Kingdoms of Amalur. I don't know how many people are going to remember this game, but I remember being really impressed by it. It was super big and expansive, and it felt like a, you know, a, a pretty enormous type of MMO experience, but it was single player, and you could just get on into these great battles, and it just felt like it was going on forever. Like, it really felt like a, a merge between Diablo and World of Warcraft, which was incredible back in 2012. I don't know if that's what people want in 2018, but it was good lore. It was interesting, you know, like it, it kept me hooked. It was absolutely a solid title, and I was really sad to hear that, you know, it, it all came crashing down. Now, Kurt Schilling has turned out to be a, a bit of a uh, controversial figure, to say the least. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if any of the original developers are still involved or the story makers, the lore makers. Uh, but it's, you know what, it's a cool story for the video game industry that even when you think something is totally dead, it can still come back again. Now do PsyOps now, THQ Nordic. That would be incredible. Now the Oscars are backtracking on a very controversial decision. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences has decided to scrap their new Best Popular Film category. The category was first announced a few weeks ago as and was meant to honor the best popular or mainstream blockbuster style movies, which are typically overlooked or snubbed by the more prestigious best picture category. Many film fans accused the Oscars of creating the category in order to continue overlooking popular movies like Black Panther and Wonder Woman, creating a double standard. There's no word if the Academy will try to re-implement the best popular film category next year. Yeah, it's a dumb idea. It's really like a secondhand compliment or a backhanded compliment to give somebody a popular film. What, what does that even mean? You know, popular movies have artistic merit. There are thousands of artistic contributions to make a movie like The Avengers Infinity War, which is just stunning. It's just a beautiful, you know, masterpiece of a movie, mostly because of the mechanics and the contributions and the collaboration involved. Movies like that shouldn't be ignored, you know, and I, I think it's ridiculous that they do. 
uh, you know, at least last year, Blade Runner and The Shape of Water were in contention for Best Picture, and they absolutely deserved it. I, but I feel like, we, you know, we, we move away from these uh, comic book narratives and these sci-fi stories a little bit too quickly. They resonate. They matter. And just because they matter to a mass audience doesn't mean that they are any less, uh, you know, valuable culturally or, or artistically. And I think it's absolutely silly for the Academy to, to think that they have to be put into a different box like that. And honestly, what film director or film producer would be happy receiving that as some sort of... Uh, you know, secondhand deal, you know, like just some sort of slight in a way. I think it's a good move that the Oscars backtracked on that and hopefully it doesn't rear its ugly head again. All right, the latest Civilization game is finally making the jump to consoles, but it may not be the console you think. 2K Games has announced that Civilization VI, first released in the PC back in 2016, will make its console debut on the Switch. This might come as a surprise given that the title has yet to land on the PS4 or Xbox One, and there's no indication that it ever will. The Switch version obviously won't look as good as the PC, but it does promise to include the entire original game along with the latest updates and content packs. There will also be competitive multiplayer and local four-play co it hits the Switch on November 16th. That's not the only big game jumping to the Switch. Square Enix has released Final Fantasy XV on the system, but not the full version of the game. It's instead the Pocket Edition, which was released on iOS and Android devices earlier this year. It retells the entire Final Fantasy XV story, but with simplified gameplay and cutesy character models, it's available to download now. And I think this is clearly an example of, well, two things. The Switch is a, a huge success. It's selling very well, and, uh, you know, people are publishing games on this system of every size and shape. And I, I think publishers are thinking, well, I think we, could, we should experiment. We should try some different titles on there. But I think it's also an indication that a lot of developers in the video game industry have a Switch at their desk as they're building games for whatever other platform. The fact that this console quality handheld is being ported around by so many people in the video game community in this industry, I think it, it means that we're going to start to see a lot more experimentation. I think this is great news, and it's a further indication that the Switch was a remarkable idea by Nintendo, so congratulations to all the uh, happy Switch owners out there and to Nintendo. That's going to do it for our rundown today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back again on Monday with brand new episodes of EP Live and the rundown. Thank you for uh, having some patience during our, our little break while we've been so busy with other things outside of the EPN uh, universe. Thank you for sticking with us. Thank you for watching all the content that we make. And you know, there's tons to get caught up on. If you haven't watched everything, make sure you do. And if you dig our stuff, hit subscribe, that little bell. And if you're so inclined, we have the join button on our, our gaming.youtube.com slash EPN TV site as well. Thank you to all the uh, members of the EPN community. And don't forget, play forever. <laughs>